Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exultation. So let us also, gathered together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again revealed in glory. We shall now have the blessing of candles. Let us pray. O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man, Simeon, the light for revelation to the Gentiles. We humbly ask that in answer to your people's prayers, you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles, which we are eager to carry in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue we may reach that light which never fails through Christ our Lord. Amen. Longing for peace 
our world is troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your words alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. For food, many are hungry, longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore, adore you, we glorify you, you. We, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way for me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining, and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi. 
refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who is this of who is this king of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the king of glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, your lintels. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? It is the Lord. Who is this king of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, your lintels. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely, he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God, to expiate the sins of the people, because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in, accordin in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, 
you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped day and night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. And uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining us in this celebration of the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord. We celebrate this day not only the presentation of Jesus, but the coming of Jesus into the temple. And in our readings today, we are reminded that when God comes to us, when Jesus comes to our lives, then He leaves something good. Kapag dumating ang Diyos sa buhay natin, mayroon siyang iniiwang kabutihan. In our first reading today from the prophecy of Malachi, we see God declaring that He will send His messenger. And when the Lord comes, He said, he will bring with him the refiner's fire that will purify us so that we can offer worthily our sacrifice in the temple. When God comes, he brings with him purification and cleansing so that we could offer in the sacrifice of the temple of the Lord. Dumating ang Diyos, dala ang paglilinis, ang kabutihan ng kalinisan, nang sa gayon, tayo ay makapag-alay sa templo ng Diyos. God came and He brought with Him the goodness of purification of cleansing ourselves. In our gospel reading today, we see that when Jesus came into the temple, He brought with Him not only the cleansing waters that purify us, but He also brought with Him the light of revelation. And this light that Jesus brought with himself remained with Simeon, with Anna, who were waiting in the temple. That is why after they saw Jesus, 
the light of revelation to the Gentiles, they themselves were able to prophesy, to proclaim the goodness of God. Because when Jesus came to them, he brought with him something good. And that is the light that enabled them to prophesy. And in our second reading today, from the letter to the Hebrews, we are reminded that when Jesus came to the world, He became like us in our body, in our flesh. So that, according to the second reading today, when Jesus came into our own flesh, He might become one with us. So that even when we are suffering, when we are tested, Jesus is with us. Dumating si Jesus sa mundong ito at naging tao kagaya natin. At iniwan niya ang biyaya ng kanyang sarili sa ating pagiging tao. Nang sa gayon, anuman ang pagdaanan natin bilang tao, alam nating kapiling natin si Jesus. When we are tested, when we are suffering in our flesh, we know that Jesus has left something good by coming in the flesh. My dear brothers and sisters, the celebration today teaches us that when God comes into us, He will leave something good in our lives. Kaya po siguro nagbasbas tayo ng mga kandila. This morning, we have blessed candles and you will take them home into your families, into your communities. When you feel that you are tested, when you feel that you are being tested in the flesh, you are being tested in your life, light those candles. They are reminders that Jesus came into our lives and He left something good and that is His light. So that whenever we are tested, we know that the light of Jesus is left already with us. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, is the day of prayer or the day of consecrated life. That is why maybe you could see among us different religious sisters, people in consecrated life. We thank them today because the life of a consecrated person of a religious brother or sister is following the life of Jesus. That when you come into the life of so many people whom you serve, you leave something good in the lives of people. Tama ba ako, sisters? Do you leave something good in the lives of persons? Yan ang buhay ng isang religious brother or sister. Missionaries, you are working in different places. Schools, orphanages, parishes, communities, and in many other different aspects of the lives of people. Like Jesus, when you come into the lives of people, you leave something good in their lives. And I hope they will remember always that good. Naalala ko po, marami ring mga uh, religious sisters ang nakilala ko, and I always call them my spiritual mothers. Or for the younger ones, my religious, my spiritual sisters. And when I remember these spiritual mothers or sisters to me, I always remember the good 
that you have left in my life. And I hope that good, that light, will continue shining. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration, as you hold the candles, as you take them home, as you take them back to your rooms or to your communities and families, remember that when God comes into our lives, He will leave something good in us. Amen. Please stand. Christ shines as the light of salvation to all nations and the glory of his people. Let us bring our prayers to the Father who gave up his only Son for us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, let your light shine on us. Lord, let your light shine on us that the Church may show to the world the true face of Christ and be a sign of salvation to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, let your, your light shine, shine on, on us, that those in authority may render selfless service to society, have the courage to speak and act in the name of truth and justice, and bear witness to the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, let your light shine on us, that we, may, that we may be inspired by the obedience of Our Lady and Saint Joseph to always observe the precepts of the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, let your light shine on us, that fathers and mothers may inspire their children to follow Christ by their own examples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your light shine on us, that our beloved dead may go forth into God's peace and rejoice forever with Mary and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let your light shine on us, in silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions, for the intentions offered in this Mass. And let us most specially pray today for our brothers and sisters in the consecrated life. Lord, without you, we are in darkness. May your light shine brightly in us that we may become in our own way reflections of your light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, 
for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For your co-eternal Son, was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who have uh, joined us in this celebration. And I would like to greet most especially our brothers and sisters in the consecrated life as we uh, celebrate today the World Day for the consecrated life. And especially those who are joining us through the online broadcast of this Mass those in the retirement houses, in the infirmaries, those who are sick. I know many of you are following our online masses, and I thank you for always being with us here in the Manila Cathedral. And uh, we would like also to invite everyone tonight, uh, our prayer of the Healing Rosary for the World will be hosted by the Diocesan Shrine of Nuestra Señora de las Saleras, in Aliaga Nueva Ecija. And so tonight, let us continue to be one in prayer at 9 p.m. for the Healing Rosary for the World. Just one last request. Usually, the sisters request that they take a picture with the priest after the Mass. But today, I would like to ask to take a picture with the sisters. So, I request all the religious sisters who are here to come forward after the Mass so that uh, I could give you a small blessing and also a picture with you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maria, inanang awa.